Welcome to this lecture on transition metal organometallics in catalysis and biology. And in this series of lectures, we have looked into various uh, reactions that are important uh, to uh, catalysis, particularly from the industrial perspective uh, in terms of industrial scale synthesis. And we have been looking at the applications of organometallic chemistry uh, in a big uh, uh, level. Now, in this uh, uh, series of lectures, in the last few lectures, we have looked into olefin metathesis, uh, particularly alkene metathesis uh, uh, reactions. We have looked at how uh, it was developed, uh, the story behind their development, discovery, development, mechanisms and also uh, uh, the various types of uh, metathesis reaction uh, that uh, have been uh, subsequently discovered and are put uh, uh, under same umbrella as the uh, class of metathesis reaction. Uh, continuing further along this discussion, we are going to be discussing another important topic, uh, variant of metathesis reaction, uh, particularly the cross uh, metathesis reaction. The cross metathesis uh, reaction is given by, is, uh, by the following uh, equation. and it is represented by so this is a sort of intermolecular metathesis reactions, so intermolecular version of metathesis uh, uh, reaction. Now, uh, these uh, uh, cross metathesis reaction, the applications of cross metathesis reaction is significant and uh, the development of a cross metathesis reaction uh, 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 for industrial purpose uh, 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 application uh, is also very interesting. Now, uh, let me uh, just uh, uh, give uh, uh, a brief overview of the, uh, the story about how this cross metathesis reaction came into being, uh, particularly uh, for utility in industrial scale applications. Now, uh, these all began uh, back in uh, um, uh, 1960s or uh, 70s, uh, 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 60s, uh, uh, particularly when uh, people were trying to make uh, these uh, large, uh, large scale synthesis of uh, olefins. Now, the story uh, uh, starts uh, with uh, 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 the need for developing soft detergents, need for De developing soft detergents uh, which are which are nothing but uh, a linear chain linear fatty alcohols as opposed to hard detergents which are branched fatty alcohols. Now, these uh, branched fatty uh, uh, alcohols, they were, uh, 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 they were so, sort of uh, uh, being sold uh, by Shell, uh, uh, by uh, Shell development, uh, uh, Shell chemicals. Uh, and uh, these hard detergents are branched uh, fatty alcohols, a long chain uh, alcohol branched uh, long chains with uh, alcoholic ends, these are called long fatty alcohols. They were causing a uh, lot of uh, uh, depositions of foams and uh, um, on the rivers, uh, the foams and surf surfactants uh, on the uh, rivers and it was uh, sort of uh, uh, um, uh, creating a biological ecological havoc and there was a need 
uh, and because of uh, lack of uh, any method uh, for their degradation, there was a need uh, to develop uh, the soft detergents uh, having linear fatty alcohol. So, that is how uh, the story uh, starts uh, and uh, fatty alcohols uh, that time were in high demands and had a lot of uh, uh, market uh, potential. So, they uh, uh, were in high demands. Uh, with uh, a lot of uh, market potential. So, the idea was uh, to access this long chain uh, fatty alcohols and uh, they uh, primarily uh, were being produced, uh, uh, produced uh, from hydroformylation from uh, uh, alkenes alkenes uh, uh, in presence of chlorine uh, to give uh, long chain alkenes, alkenes to give uh, alkyl halide uh, that uh, would uh, undergo HCl elimination to give olefins and that olefins under hydroformylation and then subsequently a reduction would uh, give uh, these uh, uh, fatty alcohols both uh, linear and the branch. So, that, uh, that was the method uh, uh, at that point of time uh, uh, which uh, was uh, uh, being used for producing uh, these uh, soft and hard uh, detergents uh, which were obtained from the fatty alcohols. Now, the other way of accessing uh, these uh, uh, olefins are from uh, cracking uh, petroleum, large scale cracking of uh, natural oil, natural gas. So, uh, these, uh, so there was, there was a sort of a, a demand, uh, there was sort of a demand uh, uh, to go all the way uh, 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 from uh, uh, olefins uh, to these uh, uh, detergents uh, via uh, uh, this alkyl halide, uh, then olefins, and then hydroformylations, uh, and so uh, so on, so forth. This is alkanes. Okay. Now, uh, at that point, uh, uh, the Shell uh, Shell Chemical uh, discovered uh, shop Shell higher olefin polymerization process, uh, uh, which is called Shell higher olefin process. So, uh, what is this method? Uh, this method actually converted ethylene to alpha olefins, uh, not uh, uh, alpha olefin oligomers and uh, not polymers. Uh, not polymers. And the catalyst used uh, for this uh, uh, is uh, uh, nickel. Nickel was found to produce alpha olefin poly, uh, polymers uh, fr uh, from ethylene. But the other process also went on uh, to become uh, a very big industrial hit and even won a Nobel Prize. And this is Ziegler Nutter polymerization. Uh, if uh, same olefin, if it is taken uh, uh, with uh, uh, titanium mm, uh, uh, and uh, aluminum halides, then uh, it can make uh, uh, polyolefin polymers.
Uh, so, Ziegler Nutter will take olefin all the way to polymer, uh, whereas uh, uh, the need was to develop uh, alpha olefin oligomers. So, they are not uh, uh, too high of a molecular weight and that uh, was developed by this uh, shell higher olef uh, olefin process uh, by shell chemicals. So, uh, uh, this is a industrial process which could would stop uh, the polymerization of olefin all the way to polymer and uh, could uh, isolate uh, them uh, uh, in uh, oligomers. Uh, so, uh, uh, this uh, was indeed a big uh, discovery and then uh, what is uh, important uh, was that uh, these uh, oligomers uh, th that were being produced by Shaw, uh, sh uh, shell hydrolefin had several fragments uh, like uh, it was a mixture of uh, oligomers and then uh, they were at a stake in trying to find out how to utilize all of the fractions of these uh, oligomers. So, to best illustrate the point, uh, uh, when they were uh, looking at the concentration of alpha olefin produced, so this is the mole percent of alpha olefin produced versus carbon number, uh, the distribution was like this. Uh, uh, this is called Sul's Flory distribution. of alpha olefins produced from a shop process. So, what uh, uh, they observed uh, that, uh, that there is a large amount of uh, uh, alpha olefins are produced which are uh, lower than C12 fragment, this is C12 uh, fragment huh. and uh, there is also a uh, large uh, a less much less number of olefin produced which was above C18 fragment. Now, this was the distribution. Now, what was important over here is that uh, from this uh, distribution only this uh, bottom part from C12 to C14 uh, uh, was of importance for detergent range for with them they could make uh, uh, and tap this detergent. So, uh, this uh, the middle portion, uh, so there was no control uh, for swap process and it could give uh, a lot of uh, alpha olefins which are less than uh, carbon 12 uh, uh, atoms and then there would be a sub substantial also which are more than carbon 18 atoms which had no use for uh, detergent uh, purpose and uh, uh, the overall focus uh, then was in uh, how to use uh, these two fractions, how to use these two fractions. And this whole story, uh, this whole story uh, uh, was uh, developed uh, uh, in Shell and what uh, 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 the idea was uh, that uh, uh, this is where uh, they uh, took off, uh, uh, took the help of other uh, chemistry. So, the strategy so the strategy was first uh, these alpha olefins of less than C12 fragments and greater than C18 fragments to be uh, isomerized fractions to be isomerized. That means that uh, for example, if there is an alpha olefin, uh, it would uh, have somewhere in the middle uh, the olefinic bond getting uh, isomerized with 
the total uh, number of n being remaining the same. So, some, some sort of isomerization of the olefinic bond from alpha position to some internal uh, position that is what they looked at. And then the next uh, strategy was metathesis then to perform metathesis of these isomerized less than C 12 and greater than C 18 fractions. Now, uh, the idea is that uh, if these two fractions uh, are done metathesis of then they uh, would give products which would be in this range and again that can be used for detergent purpose. So, this was a really a very clever way of utilizing uh, uh, the olefins which are uh, supposedly uh, non-usable at that uh, point of time and hence uh, the idea was that uh, they for them to do isomerization followed by metathesis which will give fragments again in this range of C12 to 18 and then they can further uh, use it uh, for uh, uh, the purpose uh, for which the plant was built. And this uh, is best illustrated uh, in the following slide for one octane octane and this is a C 8 fragment undergoing isomerization to give 4 octane and similarly C H two seventeen. This is called one e e e e e e i c o s e n e. This is C twenty fragments undergoing similar isomerization to give C eight. C 8, this is called 10 E i cosine fragment which after isomerization would be subjected to metathesis to give C 10, C 14 fragment which is called 2 tetra D sin. So, and this is a C 14 fragment. So, what is interesting uh, to note uh, is that in industrial scale by taking uh, the uh, less than C12 and greater than C18 fragments, for example, uh, 1 octane with C8 and 1 ecosine with C20, then undergoing isomerization uh, giving this C8 and C20, which uh, would undergo metathesis to give the C14 fragments. And this uh, is uh, uh, in the middle uh, for use for uh, making the uh, detergent reagent. So, this is a, a very nice way 
of utilizing uh, in the alpha olefins, uh, which uh, uh, were uh, 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 unusable at that point of uh, uh, time. Now, what is important over here to note is that fact that both of these uh, olefins are synthesized from ethylene using uh, shop uh, cell higher olefin uh, uh, process. So now uh, if somebody uh, uh, the sh what Shell wanted to do is to apply three chemical reactions in industrial scale and the three chemical reactions all in a uh, same plant and uh, three chemical reactions would thus be Uh, now this is number one, uh, then isomerization number two and metathesis number three. All of these uh, uh, should uh, 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 occur uh, without interfering with uh, it in any of these and then uh, 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 give uh, the right product. And we have seen that uh, the metal used for each of these are uh, different. For example, for the first step it is nickel whereas for the metathesis step it was ruthenium. Uh, so uh, uh, there is a lot of optimization that uh, they had to uh, undertake in order to bring compatibility uh, uh, of three la uh, large scale processes, uh, three different chemical reaction uh, and um, uh, 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 then uh, in an industrial scale uh, uh, to be able to uh, produce uh, the fragment they need. Now this uh, uh, in today's lecture what is important is that this metathesis reaction what uh, they would be carrying out over here is nothing but cross metathesis. This metathesis reaction is actually a cross metathesis uh, between two different uh, olefins that is exactly uh, what we are seeing it. So this uh, uh, shop uh, process containing cross metathesis is a large scale industrial applications uh, uh, of uh, uh, shop uh, as well as of metathesis chemistry. Now uh, towards this end uh, a lot of uh, 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 research has to taking place, there were people expert in shop chemistry, developing shop chemistry, then people expert in uh, uh, isomerization chemistry as well as people expert in metathesis chemistry were in put in place uh, uh, to uh, uh, come up uh, uh, with a, uh, a single flow diagram in which uh, all this whole uh, uh, sequences uh, that has drawn out here uh, could be realized in an industrial scale and uh, that led to Oh, the following uh, flow diagram for the shop uh, uh, production plant which is shown over here. And that is given by first uh, the ethylene feed so that uh, would enter the uh, oligomerization chamber. oligomerization Jason chamber uh, then that would lead to a second chamber which would be used for catalyst recycling. So the nickel catalyst used for shop would be recycled back for next phase then comes the distillation chamber uh, 
uh, which will give alpha olefins for market. And these would be C12 to C20 fractions, C18, C12 to C18 fractions, they would be straight away used for market. And then the remaining fractions which are less than C12 and greater than C18 would be taken to the fourth chamber which will involve isomerization and then post isomerization the next what remains is cross methodesis. cross metathesis and this would uh, of less than C12 and greater than C18 fractions. And then finally, the product would be C11 to C14 fractions. for hydroformylation and benzene alkylation. So, the next formats would be used for that and the remaining the smaller one would again be recycled which is less than C10 and greater than C14 uh, olefins. So, uh, this uh, is a nice demonstration how the need for detergent or uh, the need for detergent grade alpha olefins led to development of uh, three important major industrial reaction uh, uh, all being carried out in a plant and this was developed by cell chemical and a nice uh, article uh, about this uh, perspective development uh, uh, has been given by Wilhelm Kaim, who uh, uh, had been witness uh, uh, to this uh, development of shop uh, from the labor, uh, from the from their industrial research to that of the uh, industry, uh, when he was working at uh, 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 Shell uh, Chemical, and uh, has given a nice account in Angu Chem International Edition. 201352 124192 to 1296. So, uh, with this, uh, uh, I come to the conclusion of uh, uh, today's lecture, which was on cross method metathesis, particularly with regard to the applications of cross metathesis. And in this perspective, we have taken up the whole developmental story of uh, cross metathesis reaction with respect to uh, sh shell hydrolefin process, uh, which is uh, which was developed uh, 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 at shell chemicals and the whole perspective given from Professor William Kang in the perspective. Uh, given in Angu Chem International Edition 2013, volume 52, 12492-12496. This is an excellent uh, uh, read. I suggest uh, uh, all the uh, uh, students of this class to refer to this uh, 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 article and to see how uh, the need uh, has led to interesting development. And here is was uh, one which was done at industry where three uh, uh, big reactions were put in place uh, for large scale production to arrive uh, at uh, the need of what uh, uh, they wanted, which was about C12 
for uh, uh, mid-range alpha olefins. So, with this I conclude today's lecture and I look forward to uh, discussing more on various application aspects of cross-metathesis reaction when I meet next. Till then thank you and goodbye.